few months ago I was able to attend my first steampunk event in several years and during lockdown I'd been joking with some friends about making a long range fist bumper uh, so the idea being that you could um, have a fist on the end of a pole and give someone a fist bump from long range thus maintaining social distancing. So what I've created here is uh, what I call the scepter of social distancing or the long range fist bumper uh, if you will. Um, so I thought it would be quite amusing if I was wandering around the uh, steampunk event with a rubber fist on the end of a pole. Um, so to that end I needed to make a copy of my fist in rubber. Um, now I knew how to do this because this is a technique which I'd heard about a while back but I've never actually tried. And so I thought it'd be quite interesting to do a video going through that technique and just showing how I made this piece. Now if you want to make a mould of a body part there are several ways of doing it and there are several types of silicon that you can buy which are safe uh, for use on skin uh, so they won't stick and they won't trap hairs and they're not toxic. Um, I'm a little bit old school though so I'm going to use the method that I learnt in university and that's to use this stuff which is called alginate. Now this was commonly used by dentists to make moulds of teeth. I don't know if it still is, it's possible they may have moved on to using silicons as well but this stuff's really useful so it's quite low cost, it's very easy to use, it's water based and so it's not really toxic. Um, so as you can see what I'm doing here is mixing up some alginate and all I'm doing is adding it to water and using a drill to mix that together. Now it can be quite easy to create a big old mess with this and that sort of happened when I did this but um, that's just the nature of the beast and obviously if you're a little bit more careful than me you'll probably get on a little bit better. And this stuff's called a chromatic alginate and as you can see it's gone quite a bright pink colour here. Uh, because alginate sets quite quickly it can be as quick as three to four minutes depending on the temperature temperature of the water that you mix it with. Um, it's useful to have an indication as to when it's going to set. So this stuff starts off bright pink but gets paler as it goes um, so you've got a gauge on when it's going to set. So as you can see what I'm doing is just pu pushing my fist into the alginate mix and what I'm doing is just uh, moving my hand about inside to make sure I get the material all over my fist and so there aren't any air bubbles trapped. And so it's really now just a case of waiting for the alginate to set. As it does set, you sort of feel it's um, becoming a bit firmer around your hand. And what you actually get is a bit of a suction effect. So there's a sort of a vacuum between the mould and your hand. Um, so once it's set, what I need to do is to slowly work my hand free. Now just speed up the video slightly so we get to the point where this is actually set. So at this point this was feeling quite firm and as you can see I can actually pick this whole thing up now without it falling apart. So it looks like it's pretty much set. So all I need to do is now start moving my hand back and forth and trying to start letting some air into the mould. Because I have this sort of suction effect going on between my hand and the mould, it won't come out straight away so I've just got to sort of release that pressure so I can actually free my hand. As you can see the alginate's actually got a little bit paler as it's set and that's the idea of the, uh, the chromatic um, aspect of this. Now this was a little bit tricky holding a phone and videoing this and trying to get my hand free of the mold at the same time. Uh, but it's just a matter of slowly uh, going through it. And what you can do if you've got a way of doing it is to actually spray some air into the mold to try and release that lock further. If you do try this, don't get too alarmed. This stuff's um, very easy to break if you really do need to uh, free your hand quickly. But it's just a matter of slowly working it free. Right, at this point I could really feel it coming, so I can sort of brace it against my hip and slowly pull that out. Right, so there we go. Now this stuff is quite flexible, so it's perfectly possible to free whatever you've made a mould of from the um, alginate quite easily. It's sort of got the consistency of silicon really, so that's why it's quite useful. Uh, but it doesn't last very long, it's water based and it will dry out. Um, so whatever you cast into it, you sort of need to do within the next few hours. So there we go, so as you can see inside, it's captured the uh, interior detail of my hand pretty well. So that's looking pretty good. I've previously used this stuff to make uh, casts of heads and faces and so forth, so it's quite versatile. Right, so in order to make a cast I need to pour something into the mould. What I'm going to be using is this stuff, which is a uh, silicon rubber. 
Now there are lots of types of silicon rubber and many are used for making moulds uh, but obviously some are also used for making uh, puppets and prosthetic makeup and things like that. So this stuff is intended for that purpose and it's a platinum or addition cure silicon. What that really means is you add two equal volumes of the two parts of the silicon together. Once they're mixed they'll set. Um, this stuff's really useful because you can get some really nice um, realistic skin textures with it. Um, I actually did some prosthetic masks for um, actually a YouTube viewer um, who contacted me recently and if you're watching you know who you are um, but we had some uh, good fun putting together some uh, masks using this stuff we got some really nice realistic skin effects with it so I've been wanting to do something else with this material for a while and this seemed like the perfect opportunity now once you've got your two halves of your silicon mixed together you can add some pigment So we've got quite a nice skin colour going on there. Um, you can sometimes find that this stuff looks quite opaque when it's in the mixing cup, but when you actually pour it in and it's a bit thinner, it's a little bit translucent. Uh, it's not really a problem in this case, I want a degree of translucency so it'll look uh, realistic. So I'm just going to pour some silicon into the mould here, then I'm just going to roll it around to try and release any air bubbles that might get trapped. Because I'm going to have to break the mould to get the silicon out, um, this is kind of a one-shot deal. I've got enough algae on it to have another go if I need to, uh, but I prefer not to. So I'm just taking extra care to free any air that might be trapped in the mould. Because I need to attach this piece to the wooden handle, I've just made this wooden plug with a screw thread coming out the back. And that's going to sit in the mould once I've poured all the silicon in. So I think I've released uh, all of the air from the uh, finger detail in the mould. And as a final check, I'm just going to seal the end of the mould with my hand and rotate it a little bit, just to give the, any air that is trapped in the mould the opportunity to escape. Right, so I'm as sure as I can be that I've allowed all of the air to escape from this. So I can now put my plug into the mould, and now it's just a case of leaving that to set. So this particular silicon um, dries quite quickly, so I've left this for about an hour, uh, and that's looking pretty good. So in order to free this from the mould, what I need to do is pull the uh, alginate out of the mixing bowl, and I can simply break the mould apart to free my cast. Okay, so that's not looking too bad. Now because this is a two-part silicon mix, um, it reacts with itself, so the surrounding uh, mould material, even though it's water-based and quite moist, doesn't inhibit the cure. So that's really useful, so you can do some quite quick uh, reproduction of body parts um, using this method, and I've seen people make arms and heads and things like that. Uh, if, you know, if you need some um, dead bodies for a film, for example, or you want to make some Halloween props, uh, people will frequently use this method to create some arms and hands and then cut them up, add some blood effects and so forth. And you can very quickly create some fake body parts. It's quite nice techniques, it's quite quick. Now I want to add a little bit more detail to this, so I'm going to add a layer of paint to it. Now I've mentioned in previous videos, when you paint silicon, you can't use regular paints. The reason being is the only thing that sticks to silicon is really silicon. That's why it's such a good mold making material, because anything you pour into a silicon mold won't stick to it. But obviously that's a bit of a problem if you actually don't want to paint a silicon piece. So the way you do it is you mix up some additional silicon of the same type as your cast and you add some pigments to that. So all I'm doing here is just dabbing on some additional silicon into the top of this cast and it's just silicon I've tinted with some red pigment instead of the uh, flesh colour stuff that I use for the main piece. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail on this, uh, primarily because I kind of screwed up the paint job to be honest with you. It's quite easy with this to go too strong very very quickly and I ended up sort of having this way too red. It's a little bit difficult to see in the video, it looks quite different to the eye um, as opposed to how it does on the video but this kind of looked like he'd been punching something um, quite a lot. Um, so I initially thought this was okay and sort of decided to go ahead with it and what I'm doing here is just adding some talcum powder. Now the reason I'm doing that is because the um, silicon 
skin is very very shiny and gloss so in order to mat that down and basically stop it being sticky you add some talcum powder to it the talcum powder sticks to the silicon and kind of seals it to a degree so that's sort of the final step in sealing this if you will um, but afterwards i sort of um, was looking at it on the desk and thought ah you know what i've gone a little bit too strong so um, i was able to sort of peel some of the paint back off again because uh, it hadn't fully cured um, but to be honest with you i kind of messed up the finish a little bit it wasn't quite as good as i was hoping for but um, you know this is just a short little uh, fun project so I wasn't going to worry about it too much. So the final element of this was to make a handle. So what I decided to do was to buy some oak rods and I'm just putting them on the lathe and cutting in some detail to add a bit more visual interest to it. Right, and so this is how it ended up. Um, so this was quite fun to um, carry about the uh, steampunk events and uh, greet everybody in a socially distanced way. So just a short video there and hopefully that's going to be an interesting technique uh, if you ever need to replicate a body part of some sort. Now obviously don't get too carried away with the technique, uh, but I hope that was useful if you do have that sort of thing on your mind. Um, so I think that's it for this one, so thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.